morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider His Holy Word and learn to do the things that please Him. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. So today I want to talk about common sense and the way God made things to be, particularly as it relates to men and women. I want to discuss these things from the Word of God, knowing that anyone who is listening to this channel desires to please God. If we're looking into the scripture to understand what God wants from us, then we do those things because we want to please him. Jesus Christ said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And he also said to the religious Pharisees of his time, he said, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? So if a person says that Jesus Christ is Lord, which indeed he is, then they would follow through with that and do the things that are pleasing in God's sight. Hallelujah. So in the beginning, God created everything, and he particularly created mankind. And we'll read of this if we turn now to Genesis chapter 5, starting in verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day which they were created. And of course, we know after that happened, mankind sinned. So Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit in the middle of the garden, and they came to understand that they were naked. In other words, they were separated from God and no longer in his image. In verse 3 we read, And Adam lived in 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. So every human being who was born after that was in the image of Adam, who had sinned against God and was no longer in his image. Now, men and women are still in the likeness of God in that we have many attributes that are like God. For example, we have language. We speak. And God, when he spoke, he created the world. And God said, let there be light and there was light. And those of us who are Christians and abide in God's word, we understand that words have power. And those of us who believe the word of God and do it have a good understanding. It is written in Psalm 111, verse 10, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And those of us who love the truth and abide in God's word, we understand some really simple things. So, newsflash, men and women are different. It doesn't mean that men are better than women or women are better than men. Subjection to the way God created the, the world to be doesn't mean bondage or, or oppression or discrimination or slavery. It is the way God made things to be because he made everything beautiful in its time. So a woman it is written, so let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's read in verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So Eve, of course, was created to be a beautiful companion and servant to her husband, Adam. And women were created to do that. We can see that all the way down to the level of DNA. A, a male child, when conceived in the womb, has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. And as that 
child begins to develop, he create he is um, he has attributes that are male. So he develops male genitalia, and he is different than a girl child. And a girl child, when formed in the womb, has two X chromosomes. So at the very beginning of life, when a child is conceived in his or her mother's womb, they are different, and men and women are different. A little girl is made to bring forth eggs that can be fertilized when she is joined onto her husband later in life. So a woman has eggs and a man has the seed that brings forth life in those eggs. And men and women are different. And because of the biological differences between men and women, it is natural and good and right that a woman should be subject to her husband. First of all, we understand that our first mother, Eve, our first mother, Eve, made a really bad decision. Because the woman was made to be very beautiful for her husband in different ways. So she was made to be emotionally sensitive. She was made to be compassionate with an eye for beauty and an eye for the needs of the flesh so that she could serve her husband and her children in those things. So we who are mothers, we understand that when we've had a little baby, we know why they're crying. Our husband has no clue. But we know. We know whether it's the diaper or they're hungry or they have a gas bubble or a diaper pen is sticking into them or something. We know why they're crying by instinct, by the instinct that God put in the woman to be sensitive to those things. As women, we also know that we have a particular tendency to know what is beautiful, not only to make ourselves beautiful for our husband, but to make the home a beautiful and a comfortable place to be. So the woman was made to be able to do these things because she was made for the man to be a suitable servant unto him. And the serpent, when he came to the woman, he beguiled her with these very things, with her compassionate nature, with her emotions, with her tendency to see something as, that looks good and her tendency to choose something that feels good the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and her tendency to desire things that would make her wise. The pride of life is something that all mankind struggles with. with. Men are no different. They struggle with these things too, but they struggle with them in different ways. So the woman is more easily beguiled by the desire or the pursuit of wisdom that is contrary to what the word of God commands. And so the serpent went to the woman to beguile her so that he could cause mankind to fall. Now, first I want to point out, before we go any further, that God knew this was going to happen. He knew the nature of man. And he also knew that Adam and Eve were innocent and had no experience whatsoever with evil. So when the serpent said to the woman, Thou shalt know, be as gods, knowing good and evil, well, she had no idea what that would mean. And so when she took of that fruit, she did it because she was beguiled, and her husband took it because he loved her. And God knew that this would happen, and he had made a provision from the very beginning about how to fix this. When he said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, in his word that would later be considered and believed and obeyed by his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So Jesus Christ came at a specific moment in time, born of a woman, born of a woman, the man, Christ Jesus, was the only begotten Son of God, not God the Son. And he came at a specific period of time to manifest the mercy of God and saving mankind from the plight that they were in ever since Adam and Eve sinned, and they then were not in the image of God anymore. He came to make mankind, both men and women, in the image of God. And so when he died on the cross, it wasn't done there. It was something very beautiful and holy was accomplished, and that he shed his innocent blood for mankind. That's not the end of the story, because he was resurrected on the third day. 
unto everlasting glory. And death and sin have no more power unto those of us who are in Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He didn't come to make it so there are no consequences for sin. Sin has consequences. But God in his mercy sent his only begotten son that those of us who would believe on his name and obey his gospel could be saved from the power of darkness, sin, and death. And this, of course, is accomplished in the time of the new covenant after Jesus Christ had been glorified on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was poured out. The way of salvation and the way to enter into the new covenant with God was to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The remission of sins means you are washed of the tendency to sin, the curse of sin and death that Adam brought upon all his children. The remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the gift of the Holy Ghost is when God's Spirit comes to abide in a human being, man or woman. And when this happens, we speak in an unknown tongue. So when we have the Spirit of God in us, the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us, we are then filled with the, with the life of God. And when we live thereafter, we live thereafter not to serve ourselves or to walk in the ways of darkness that we once knew, the knowledge of good and evil, rather to abide in the light and to serve the light and to be ambassadors for the perfect light of Jesus Christ, that others who can see that light will also desire to be saved. So the woman was made for the man just as the church of Jesus Christ was made for Jesus Christ. And he bought us, those of us who are Christians, with his blood. He laid down his life for us so that we could share in his life with him for eternity. We are now in a period of betrothal to Jesus Christ, wherein we are proven whether or not we will be faithful or not. It's not automatic. We have to be found faithful. We need to overcome. So there's an order of subjection in God's people, in the body of Christ. Now, I'm, I'm not here to set policy in the United States government. I am not here to determine what men and women do who are not yet Christians. As a matter of fact, it is the Word of God that determines what God's people do. And I am here to tell you what it says so that you can be blessed. Because when we do the things that God commands, we are blessed. When we follow the commandments of Jesus Christ, we show him that he is our Lord. And these things are good and proper for anyone to do. But particularly in the body of Christ, we understand that there is an order that God created in the world. And he created the woman for the man. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, man, woman, and of course children, are subject to their parents. And I'm just going to say some things that are very common sense here. Because of the natural biology of the woman, so we all still have two X chromosomes, my sisters. We are still female. We still have female emotions. We still have female cycles. Most of us do. And we are, we are more likely to, to make a bad decision and so God has made it so that we can be subject to the man, whether it be our husband, which is the best way, of course, to have a godly husband who loves us and cares for us and guides our decisions and keeps us from doing stupid stuff. That's the best way, but not everybody has that. We are still subject to the law of God, which says that the man, the, the, the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. So we are subject, we are subject 
in the body of Christ as women to be good, obedient servants in the family of God. We don't usurp men's roles or wear men's clothing because such any that do so, such are an abomination. So there's a lot of confusion these days in the world. Women are running around wearing men's clothing and men sometimes are running around wearing women's clothing. And we wonder why there's such a thing known as gender dysphoria or gender confusion. So I'm going to say some things that are just plain common sense. When a woman is married to a man and they bear children and she's running around having a career wearing pants and the two of them are bickering and fighting all the time about what decisions are right for the family, that causes children to be confused. It will cause the girl children to think that it would be better to, to be that sort of person who is proud and contentious and vain and, and, and seeking to have authority over the man. And it causes boys to hate themselves and to feel like they are under the thumb of something that is not right. And we all know what is right and wrong deep in our heart because the law of God is written in men's hearts. So when women have left their natural use, it causes confusion. So let's read now in Romans chapter Romans, pardon me, chapter one, starting in verse 26. So here God is talking about idolatry and how people began, it's written here in the book of Romans in the letter to the Romans, that people began to worship other things other than the one true God. And it says here, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. So affections can mean things like things that we desire or our emotions or, or the things that we lust after. So vile affections has to do with desiring things that are not holy, that are not good, and contrary to the word of God. So because people sought to have the wisdom that comes from the forbidden fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, instead of the wisdom that comes from God, God gave them over to vile affections. This is the root cause of the gender confusion that exists in the world today, particularly in the West. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So the woman was made to bear children. That's why women have a uterus. Women were made to nurture children. That's why women are given mammary glands that produce milk. Women were made to be a suitable servant in their husband's house. That's why they were given the tendency to be emotionally sensitive and to be empathetic and to have an eye for beauty and an understanding of what feels good. The natural use of the woman is to serve in her husband's house, which is a beautiful thing indeed. And those of us who understand these things, of course, we are blessed, whether or not we have a husband to serve. Because the natural use of the woman is to do these things, whether it be in her own family or as a grandmother to her to be an assistant, perhaps, to her daughters or to her sons with grandchildren, or in the world and the things she does in the world and the service that she does if she needs to work, or, and most specifically, in the body of Christ, that this is what women do. They minister of their substance. They serve, doing things like making comfort food and making a beautiful home where people can gather, where it's peaceful and raising up those who are younger to do what is right, which is what I'm doing today as an aged woman in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. But we read this again, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And in our time, that came about because of propaganda and technology. So propaganda that women are to... If they're not doing what men do, somehow that's discrimination. 
So government policies were put in place that made women have preference for employment, women to have all kinds of protections from the government, preference in the courts if there was a divorce, preference in, in various other systems, sexual harassment policy, and, and so forth and so on. Those things were put into place to protect women and to shelter women as a husband might do because it's just plain common sense. A woman gets pregnant if she has sexual intercourse with a man. When women are enticed to dress like prostitutes, they are more likely to do that, also through propaganda, and this began particularly in the 60s, where women were enticed to think that free love meant that you were a good woman, and that if you gave away your virginity or you gave yourself to many men, that this was just fine, and it isn't just fine. It breeds misery in many, many ways. And so when pe women do that, of course, we have to have things like birth control and, and abortion. Not that we have to have those things, but those things become, in the eyes of mankind, necessary because women are different than men. And women get pregnant when they have indiscriminate sex. So enticing the woman through government policy and propaganda to leave her natural use caused confusion. Let's read on. Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. In other words, which was fitting. So when the woman leaves her natural use, being enticed by government policies that come forth, by the way, from the United Nations, when women have been enticed to do that by that serpentine system, it causes gender confusion. So in the beginning, it doesn't seem that bad. Maybe you have you know, women working alongside men, maybe it helps the family's income, maybe it seems like, well, you know, it's just necessary to do that because, of course, they destroy the economy at the same time. But the consequences are pervasive, and until people go back to what is right, it will continue to be this way. Now, again, I'm not here to make government policy. I'm here to tell you if you're a Christian in the body of Christ, what women do. And what people do in the world, well, they do what they do. But we want to be a light. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, and we don't live according to the things that cause such terrible harm. So let's read now in Isaiah chapter 3. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Starting in verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to pr provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe! and to their soul, for they had rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat of the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. These sorts of policies and programs artificially make it so women can do things that are contrary to their natural use. But I can assure you, if suddenly there was a grid failure, and there was no electricity and no technology, 
it would very quickly normalize relationships between men and women because a woman is not as strong physically, not as strong emotionally. And I'm not saying that because a woman is less valuable than a man. She's just different. She was made for a different use, a different purpose, which is beautiful. The purpose of the woman is beautiful. But naturally, women will gravitate to a man who will guide them and protect them and do the heavy lifting for them because a woman gets pregnant when she has sex. Because the woman was made to raise the children. If you look to indigenous societies where there is no technology or electricity, those kinds of things, that is what happens. The women tend to the children and to the cooking and to the hearth and the home, and the men go out and hunt, and the men defend against invaders and so forth. It's the natural way that God made things to be. Now I'm going to skip a little bit to verse 16 now in Isaiah chapter 3. Let's read. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk forth with and pardon me, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown, the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. So in our time, of course, what we see manifesting is exactly this. Women who have shorn off their hair and are revealing their secret parts when they're running around wearing men's clothing or mini skirts or little tiny shorts when they go jogging or what have you. Once somebody asked me, well, who discovers the secret parts of the woman who's disobedient? Well, she herself will choose to do that because she's been given over. She has left her natural use. She has thought that what is evil is good. And what is good is oppression and sub subjugation to a patriarchal system. So women discover their secret parts themselves and they shear off their hair and they're not beautiful anymore. And what happens is that they are not desirable unto men. And when we have a system like that, it causes a lot of confusion. Little girls don't know what a woman is and little boys don't know what a man is and there's much bickering and hatred about such things and confusion and there is a way for things to be better and that's what I want to talk to you about now so let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6 Jeremiah Hallelujah. Let's read in verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. And also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among men. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. God made the world to be a certain way. He created man and woman to be different, to be complementary to one another. So, of course, if a man wants to stay home and be a house husband, and he tire, ties an apron around his waist while his wife goes out and, and tries to earn a living for him and the children, uh, and uh, she, you know, She's out doing what he should be doing. He's doing what she should be doing. Well, that's confusion. That's confusion. And people wonder why their children are confused and why we have so much misery in the world today. Well, that's why. Because the woman has left her natural use. And that's happened because of specific government policies 
that have enticed women and made it easy for women to do so. Preference and employment. Various things like birth control and abortion being made the law of the land, which are really protections for promiscuous women. Those things are not necessary when a woman is married to a man and, and they have their children together and he goes out and hunts and, and stuff and she stays home and breastfeeds and makes dinner. Those things are natural. That's the way God made things to be. And if it offends you, I would say, what the Lord said. Why call ye the Lord Jesus Christ Lord? Why do you say Jesus is Lord and do not the things that he says? Because these things are for our blessing, for our benefit. It's the natural use. And again, if all of a sudden the grid failed and there was no electricity, gender problems would normalize naturally because the woman was naturally made different than the man. This, of course, doesn't mean that men are better or that women are better. It means that we are different. And it's the way our Creator made us to be. And we don't try to change those things. Surgery and pharmaceutical drugs cannot change the fact of someone's DNA. When God created you, He created you to either be a man or a woman. And being a woman is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to abide in a marriage. And if you don't have that, which many women don't these days, to abide faithfully in the precepts that are spoken of in the Word of God. And so we might sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. We might humbly serve. We might minister of our sub substance. We might help another woman with her children. We can do a lot of things as godly women, but one thing we don't do is try to change the law of God because those that do so not only will suffer for it, but God will judge them for it. Let us return to the beautiful old paths that God created in the beginning, understanding that these things are beautiful and holy and right and good. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I remain here to serve you. Feel free to write to me if you like. And may the word of God go forth today and edify and bless many. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.